This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Welcome to Boah, King of the Hill Podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty. Season 6, Episode 2. Season 6, Episode 2, indeed. Which is actually 5. 3, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It is Sorry, three. Episode 3. Uh, yeah, my you're bad. right. That's yeah. the one thing. I, no, it's me. I, it's the one thing I didn't right, mark right, yeah. off my list. I use the same template every time, yeah. and I forget sometimes to nah, mark it no, off. No, you're good. Uh, Lupe's Revenge, December 12th, 2001. Um... Uh, August, September, October. So we're only three uh, months. Uh, yeah, this is actually the after, third episode after that. The yeah, first episode of the season yeah. was the one after 9 11, yeah. This is a pretty silly episode for right after 9 11. You know, like for, yeah. for a while, well, remember, it was pretty Remember pretty the production serious. number on this one is. Yeah, sure. It was supposed to be last season. And there, it was probably actually the entire season was probably made yeah. and produced before 9 yeah, 11, most of the season, that. I imagine. All right, well, we start this sucker with no bell, no yell. No um, bell, no yell. We are uh, in Spanish class at Tom Landry Middle School, and on the on the board it says, Yo soy la substituta scora Peggy Hill. Uh, not sure if that's correct or not. Uh, yeah, I don't know. She, uh, not. The, the, bell's, uh, the bell's ringing. It's time for them to leave class. Uh, she says something to him in Spanish. Dooley gets up and turns in, or she says, and do not forget to turn in tonight's extra credit assignment. Dooley gets up, he comes in, puts his papers up, and says, you're just a sub. You can't give extra credit. <laughs> she, sa- she says, well, no, not towards your grade, but you will get credit with me, and those Peggy points add up. Peggy There's points. No such thing. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I don't know if I'd want any of <laughs> those if they existed. I don't anyway. need any Peggy points or bucks yeah. or anything. Uh, all the kids leave. Uh, a man walks in, uh, and Peggy says, well, hola, Senor Chairman Geiger. I, why chairman? I mean, because he's because he teaches German. Maybe that's why I guess because he's a German teacher, so she called him chairman. I don't know. So weird. Uh, And by the way, this is uh, Fred Willard doing this voice. The wonderful late great Fred Willard. Oh yeah, Fred Willard. Uh, One of my favorite comedians of all time. Um, He says, "Peggy, I just got off the phone with Janine Truesdale. She's taking another personal day, so I'll need you again tomorrow, and you'll have to cover the Spanish club." She goes, "Oh, tomorrow." Tomorrow's a Spanish club field trip to Mexico. He goes, oh. oh. that's awful. He goes, I didn't make it a department head supervising three people by letting a sub take students to a foreign land. <laughs> three people. Yeah, that's kind of tough. <laughs> and she says, uh, and I didn't make it the substitute teacher of the year by taking no for an answer, except on tests with yes or no questions where no was the correct answer. You can come too. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. I just. I don't I, even I, understand why she would even I, say that. I just, I just love that kind of writing. It's very funny. Yeah. Uh, Senior Chairman Geiger (laughs) says, uh, well, the bus is non-refundable and my throat could use a break from speaking German. Peggy says, I will not let you down. Bullshit. Uh, This is a rare instance where sub is actually more dependable than the regular teacher who I suspect is in fact a drunk. Yeah, she ain't right. (laughs) So now we're at the Hill House. Uh, It's night. And of course, they're having tacos uh, because she's teaching Spanish today. So I guess it's taco night. (laughs) Okay, so when you have taco night at your house. Is it the hard shell tacos with the seasoned hamburger meat? You know, like the yeah. is is it the traditional yeah. white yeah. taco? That's what I have. Yeah, I'm blessed. Then yeah. uh, currently, there's a roast in the crock pot mm. that's going to be chopped up into burrito tacos. Very nice. Yeah. So that's what we're supposed to have. I think there's a huge difference between those two, though, that you just stated, burrito tacos and and just regular old tacos. 
Because, like, even regular old tacos, we go to a couple of little Mexican restaurants here in town, and maybe it's a Tex-Mex thing, but they're just regular old ground beef. Yeah, you know, you're not going to the right places, Mike. Stuff like that. You're not eating at the right places, Mike. Well, I'm telling you this. The <laughs> regular-ass tacos, crispy tacos, you are like crispy one tacos. of my favorites of all time, and I can eat twice as many of those as I can anything else. Anything else. For some reason. No, now, uh, soft tacos... I. It's not the same thing. I don't like it. Not not a big fan. Oh, you're not a big fan. Okay. Yeah, not a big fan of soft taco. Now, Maria or any of that stuff that's uh, like street made tacos. and fried or street tacos or something like that, yeah. that's a whole different thing. That's okay. A, that's an entirely different food group a little as bit, far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I do love them. There's a place over here called, uh, shit, I don't remember what it's called, Marie's or something like that that's right over here. Um wonderful little and they're a real mexican restaurant you know yeah yeah yeah. they make some really great little street tacos and stuff yeah like you can get get like six of them or something the place i like to go to is uh uh, in the parking lot right next door to it's in uh at the end of uh, bellamy drive or whatever yeah but it's a uh taco truck right there by the old it's like a car wash and then like it used to be a pawn shop it's like a smoke shop or something now it's like at the oh, yeah, end I know what you're talking about. Yeah. uh their mm-hmm. taco stand right there probably yeah. has some of the best tacos i've ever eaten really yeah really wow. really good really good you know what i was impressed with the other night uh casey and i went to a show over here at the backyard and a uh, little little music food place number one their food was good this time which yeah. is crazy because i've never had good food there uh, but number two, um, well, I guess there's a three. Number two, it number was two. it was a uh, yacht rock cover band. Okay, yacht rock. But they were fantastic. What is yacht rock? Have you ever heard of the Spasmatics? No. Okay. What is yacht rock? Though? Yacht rock is like Hall and Oates, uh, oh, Christopher okay. Cross, all of that stuff that anybody in boat shoes would listen to okay. while out on the water. I got you. Or near so it's water. like boat shoe music. Uh, the theme song from Caddyshack, you know, I'm all right. That oh, yeah, thing, yeah, you know, yeah, I got you. That kind of theme, right? Some uh, journeys. Top Gun, kind of like top, yeah, like something you'd hear on of, Top Gun. Yeah, probably. Something you want to put sunglasses onto. But these guys were all dressed up to, like, one of them's just this douche with his with his shirt way undone, yeah. big gold chain, sunglasses, USA uh, windbreaker on, you know, <laughs> yeah. the whole thing. I mean, it, That's they, awesome. did it, they did a really good job, but I found out. Well, let me number one. Let me tell you what I was what what amazed me is that as we were leaving, there was a food truck open on the street here, which oh, never wow. happens. At yeah, night. no, it, it never happens. It was like eleven thirty, and there was a food truck oh, open. Oh damn! I was like holy crap! Yeah, you got to eat. Uh, and then I found out that this band, the Windbreakers, um, is formed. <laughs> so, it's so weird. You know how you hear about those companies that form like boy bands and stuff. Yeah, you know, and put them out like Menudo and things like that. Um, this company, all they do is form tribute bands and put them out on the road. Oh, that's crazy. So Spasmatics were one out of Dallas uh, a while back, but they all dressed like nerds or somebody in giant glasses or a neck brace or something like that, and they would sing hits from the 80s. Right. That's that's a uh, and then this one. That's a very niche market to get into. <laughs> this isn't it? one is is the Windbreakers, and they just do yacht rock, and you know everything's yacht rock themed. Yeah. There was one called the Aphrodisiacs, which I don't think is formed anymore because it's a bunch of white guys wearing afros. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that might be a little problematic. <laughs> it could yeah. be a little problematic. It might be a little problematic. But they had a list of like twenty bands that they had formed, and they just send out on the road. That's crazy. Which is nuts. Yeah, I've never heard of a I business model that like that either. I didn't know but, that was a thing. Hey, you learn something every day. Rent a band. So we're at the uh, we're at the Hill House. It's night. They're eating tacos at the dinner table. Hank says, hey, I got an idea. Instead of going to Mexico, why don't you borrow my sombrero, stay in Ireland, and teach the kids to count? You know, uno, dos, tres, like that. He could probably <laughs> count better than she can in Spanish. She says, Hank, why don't you let me go to Mexico? Is it the exchange rate? He says, no, it's just that uh, the Spanish they speak there is, you know, uh, fluent. <laughs> and she says, am I not fluent? And then Bobby and Hank just kind of look at each other like, oh, my God. I can't believe you said that. Uh, and she goes, in fact, I am so fluent that I may tutor a few Mexican kids while I'm down there. How about that? You know, it's funny, though, that uh, it's a kids. German teacher that was taken to yeah. Mexico. Did mm-hmm. you know that uh, there's a big influence on uh, Germ- German immigrants had a big influence on uh, uh, modern Mexican culture, I guess well, you could a, say? It, it's it's Texas, Mexico, all of those places because of the Six Flags. And, you know, yeah. Germany was over Texas. The music, too, time, though. The, yeah. the music influence of German is, is oh, Germany is... 
the polka listen, sound. That's what I was going to say. Sound, if you listen yeah. to that, mpa, mpa, you know that kind of thing. It's that's the polka a lot sound for of sure. Mexican music. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good beer too. Absolutely. I love Mexican beer. Like when I did drink alcohol, I yeah. drank. I drank mostly Mexican beers. Yeah. Uh, Victoria. Uh, I drank mostly beers that were yellow. Pilsners or <laughs> Pisners, American just American yeah. Pisners. I didn't really care. Uh, all right, uh, Tom Landry Middle School. Next day, they're at the bus. Um, Bobby is starting to get on the bus, and she stops him and goes, Bobby, it is crucial that I impress Chairman Geiger. Although I'm sure the kids will love this trip, I need one unified voice to vocalize what everyone is thinking. She hands him a piece of paper and says, here's your lines. Oh, wow. Bobby drops his bag, and when he does, um, he tries to pick it up real quick, but he's, there's a uh, Spanish dictionary that falls out. And she goes, uh, what is that? He goes, uh, Spanish dictionary, dad made me take it. Ooh. She says, your mother is a Spanish dictionary, and she throws the damn thing in the trash right behind him. That's tough. She goes, Bobby, if you ever marry a Spanish teacher, and you probably will, never doubt her enormous gifts. Why in the hell would he marry a Spanish teacher? Yeah, she's I'm, like I'm not her. really sure at all. So they get on the bus. Uh, Chairman Geiger says, Peggy, this is the itinerary Miss Truesdale planned for the trip, hands it to her. She goes, what's on there? A tequila factory? She kind of laughs, laughs to herself and goes, yeah. shame about the drinking. Well, oh, well. Uh, she gets on the bus. Now we've got Hank in his truck. He's just driving along. Uh, he looks down at his odometer, and it is set at 999.9. Hank gets pretty excited because in his head, he's like, oh, my gosh, she's going to turn. I wish Peggy were here to see this. And he's staring at it too long, and it makes him kind of go off the road. Uh, and he almost hits a car. He pulls over real quick, and he goes, oh, dang, you know, pulls over real quick, and then... Turns a, out to be a cop. A cop yeah. pulls out from behind him. Whoop, whoop. Now, the cop is sitting behind the Alamo beer uh, sign yep. uh, on the side of the road hiding. Hiding out. You know, as soon as he goes which by. Is, uh, yeah. Which is actually... Uh, they're not supposed to do that. They're oh, actually, yeah. The, yeah, they're not. Uh, I think it's what everybody thinks they do, though. Uh, well, because the the thing is, is if you look at uh, emergency vehicles, not mm-hmm. well, let's say cop emergency vehicles, mm-hmm. uh, law enforcement vehicles in Europe, yeah, uh, they're all lit up like Christmas trees. They have all kinds of reflectors and lights, and you can't miss them. Uh, but over here, they make these really like sleek colors to where they kind of just kind of blend in a little bit, you know, like all black or all white or yeah. all whatever. Yeah. And, uh, it makes it, uh, harder for him to see the, that it's a cop car, which is uh, against, uh, I feel like what a cop they're there to protect and serve. And if you don't know they're there, how, how can they can protect you and serve you? You know what I mean? Kind of thing. Well, I think their argument think would be like they're iffy. protecting others from you. Yeah, probably. But, uh, <laughs> Mason Mason did send us a text, and he said the trip from any city in this region of Texas to the border of Mexico alone is eight hours. How the fuck are they? He said, tee up. Are they there and back in a single day? And he's got a point. I thought he that does same have thing a point. as I was watching this. this yeah, morning. I think the quickest uh, you can get to Mexico from where we're at is uh, Highway 77 yeah. all the yeah. way down. Yeah. To and it's, it, like he said, it's about eight hours. It's not more. And it's about eight hours. It's like seven and a half hours to Brownsville. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so she uh, is it, he. She pull the cop pulls out from behind the Alamo beer sign, pulls him over. Like, oh dang! Uh, pulls pulls him over, and a woman cop gets out. She walks up to him and says, uh, "License and registration, please." He goes, "Oh, for the record, the man on the license weighs 190 pounds, and I'm." I'm up to about 197 now. I, I would have had it changed, but I'm hoping to get back to my playing weight. Cop says, oh, let me guess, football? He goes, yeah, played a little halfback at Arlen High. She says, uh, I think I saw you on the field when I was a cheerleader alternate at Rumpert. <laughs> Rumpert. Is that a real place? Rumpert, Texas? Rumpert? Uh, let me look real All fast. All right, I'm going to let you look I'm while I sure. keep going. Uh, he goes, you're, you're too young to have seen me play. She goes, am I? Ready? Okay. And she starts doing these cheerleader moves. Let's make a rumpus, Rumpert. Go, Rumpert. Uh, she goes, I'd do a split, but I've got a back, uh, I've got a backup pistol strapped to my ankle, and I'm not as flexible as I used to be. <laughs> yeah. So she's obviously flirting with him. Uh, Hank, not checking this yet, he's like, uh, oh, I'm sure you're p- still plenty flexible. She says, I'm going to let you off with just a warning if you promise to drive th- safely. He says, oh, I promise. And not just because safe driving is cool, but because it's the right thing to do. Now oh, they made rumpered up. That's oh, got to okay. be stuff for, for the right. show. Yeah, I can't say anything about it. She laughs and she gives him a look, though, and so you know the chase is on here, 
right? She's yeah, she's she's, uh, she's getting a Hank. little flirtatious with Hank here. It's so funny. Here it is funny that it's a cop that's getting flirtatious with well, Hank. It's so funny here in a minute when she stares at his ass. I love yeah. Uh, okay, so we're back at Tom Landry Middle School. We're on the bus. Uh, it has made it to Mexico already. Uh, Bobby stands up to read. And says, uh, on behalf of the Spanish club, let me just say that we are honored to be guided by the first sub ever to lead a field trip on foreign soil. Who's with me? Like, obviously reading. No yeah. one says anything, so he just sits down. Peggy's like, well, gracias, Roberto. But from now on, we will only speak the language of the natives. The bus driver, <laughs> All right. he looks at her and goes, yeah, I'm going to need those directions. She goes, in Espanol, por favor. He says, I don't speak no languages. I don't speak no I languages. I don't speak no languages. <laughs> she goes, then I will teach you. Esquerda means left, and dechera means right. And he goes, so do I make esquerda or espersha? <laughs> espersha, <laughs> yeah. Uh, espersha. So he, he obviously makes it right. Uh, now we're in the alley with all four of the guys. Hank is, is regaling them with the tale of being pulled over. Anyways, turns out the police officer used to be a cheerleader over at Rumpert. Dale, cheerleader? I thought you said he was a cop. Uh, it was one of those lady cops those you hear about. Lady cops, you hear yeah. about. <laughs> no, one of those lady cops you hear about. He goes, geez, it must have been humiliating to get beaten from a lady cop. He goes, there, there was no beating. We talked about football. She ripped up the ticket. End of story. Love story. Then you hear uh, Boomhauer kick in. Yeah, man, you know, I ain't never go flirt. I will with a ticket that man. Didn't think you had it in you, man. Uh, he says, I was not flirting. I didn't even mention that I worked in propane. Like, that's just, that's a panty dropper. That right is there. a panty dropper, yeah. yeah. I work in propane. That's Woo! that panty dropping gas. Uh, propane, <laughs> propane. <laughs> I love the propane. Dale says, uh, did you mention you have a wife? He goes, well, it didn't come up. Ooh. And he walks off as they laugh, and Bill's like, oh, that's Hank, tough. you're terrible. All right, so now we're in Mexico. We're in a very rundown part of Mexico, by the way. Obviously, she didn't go to the right place. No. Wherever she was supposed to be, she's not there. There's cars with broken windshields. There's chickens on the street. There's all kinds of crap going on. Uh, and the uh, Geiger says, "Where are we? Where's the museum?" Peggy says, "Oh, will you forget the museum? The Mexico I want my students to see is not on any map." And then she kind of looks at the map and she goes, "Well, certainly not on this map." Can she read a map? No, I don't think so. Yeah, it's like, can she even read the map that she's holding? Yeah. The bus pulls over to the side because she says, "Please stop the bus. I need to get my bearings." Bus pulls over. A guy with a chicken gets on and just sits down <laughs> and, and looks at him. And Peggy's like, uh, "Okay, well, we're going to follow him and show the kids a day in the life of the real Mexico, huh?" Wow. Uh, the guy speaks Spanish because uh, she says, Senor, donde va? He goes, uh, he says in Spanish, I am going to work in my butcher shop. Yeah, a carnicera, a carnicera is a uh, butcher shop, yeah. And she goes, oh, excellent. He's going to go carnival. work at the carnicera or a carnival. <laughs> yeah, which it is not a carnival. A carnicera is a meat. Carne means meat. <laughs> and then the thing about the, the chicken, uh, it reaches over and pecks Geiger right on the leg and draws blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Uh, the bus stops and everybody gets off. Uh, you hear, okay, Andale. Uh, she goes, walk in, in uno file, por favor. Uh, they go down the alley. They're following the very, the very poor man with his single chicken. Single chicken. And uh, It's probably his friend, too. It's probably his little pet chicken he's taking with him. No, it's not his pet chicken. Uh, Geiger says, what the hell kind of carnival is this? She says, well, it's a poor village. They can't afford rides. But they do have a petting zoo. And she takes a chicken out of one of the cages. Uh, and she says, por lo por you, to neighborhood kids. Uh, later, you see a kid riding a pig. I mean, there's all kinds of... I mean, it's the kids, mayhem. The kids are having fun. Yeah, but know? it's utter mayhem going on in, she, in the scene right now. She's talking to Geiger, and she goes, Herman, everything is under control. Relax, have a chicken, and tries to hand him a chicken. He's, yeah, he's like visually, visibly like nervous now. He's starting to think, like, what's going on now? Relax, yeah, he's not in the, He's not in the zone anymore. Mm-mm. <laughs> So uh, he goes, oh, I don't know. Maybe I could hold just the one. Uh, a guy yells at him. The, the butcher comes out and starts yelling at him about the chickens, and he takes them away. And Peggy goes, oh, oh, okay, okay. He would like his chickens. And judging from his costume, I think he's getting ready for a show. His costume. Yeah, which his costume is uh, all butcher. white butcher he's suit. A butcher. So it doesn't even look like a costume. It definitely looks like somebody's going to get murdered. Mostly they, chickens. They go inside, and the butcher is sharpening his cleaver. Uh, and Dooley says, my chicken's the star of the show. 
And then as the, all the kids are watching, the guy just goes whack and cuts the chicken Wang head off. off. Yeah. There goes the chicky all boy. The kid, all the kids are like, oh, my God. So She, she goes, uh, sweet mother of pearl. All right, all right, everything's fine. What you have just watched is one of my favorite Mexican magic tricks. And now, as his volunteer assistant, I will complete the illusion. She covers the dead chicken with some butcher paper. She grabs a live chicken from under, sticks it under the butcher paper, and goes, ta-da, and like it's a live chicken. And it was gone, and a then, live one. Well, and as she sits there and, and goes, yeah, look at me, look at me, the guy in the back chop, chops that one's head off, too. Yeah, I mean, so what you are you going to do, right? Chickens. Yeah, you got exactly. a whole lot of dead chickens. My dad told me about uh, when he was a kid, because my dad, even though he grew up in uh, uh, a similar time frame, uh, I mean, you're you're definitely younger than yeah. him, but uh, he grew up in uh, 1960. Okay, and I've said it before, he's he had like a dirt floor house and stuff like that. But uh, he grew up in an era where like his dad was born in 1912. Yeah, so his dad grew up in a time frame where. You know, dad would point out the window and go say, hey, go grab that chicken mm -hmm. right there for mm -hmm. dinner. Yeah. And my dad, he had to go do that same thing. So yeah. he remembers yeah. running out there and oh, I don't doubt grabbing it. up a chicken and breaking his neck for dinner. My uh, my uncle was a Baptist preacher, but he was one of those preachers that worked. You know, he wasn't just a full time like a farming preacher. preacher. He was. Yeah, he was like a he was an employed preacher. Right. And uh, people would give him things all the time. Uh, oh, OK. And one time they gave him a truck full of chickens as payment. Like, here's a truck full of chickens, live chickens. What do you do with a truck full? Well, I'm glad you asked, Rusty. Uh, what you do is you bring the truck over to your grandmother's yard, and you dump all the live chickens out in the backyard, and then you okay. have a party where all the kids get to go and ring the necks of chickens. Wow. That's so, what we did for so like So y'all just day. <laughs> killed chickens all day. <laughs> we killed Y'all chick massacred wham, chickens. Wham, just, you know, whacking them around by the neck and Yeah, stuff. you just whip yeah. them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I've, I've killed chickens. <laughs> I've killed fowl, all kinds of fowl for the purpose of food. But <laughs> And then we uh, would yeah. hang them on the laundry line so they could bleed out. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, what yeah, a day. Yeah. What a day. Hey, uh, you know, <laughs> next time you want to teach your kids about life, go... Uh, go get a bus full of chickens. A bucket of chicken. <laughs> All right, so Hank uh, Hank pulls up by the cop uh, behind the sign, and he's like, uh, "She well, number one, she checks her hair, and she says, oh, returning to the scene of the crime, huh? He goes, well, I don't feel right about you letting me off about this morning. Uh, I think I need more than a slap on the wrist. And she, of course, thinks this is like a sexual thing. She yeah, because that's what it is. That's, uh -huh. I mean, that's yeah. so flirtatious yeah. sounding, even though yeah. he doesn't mean for it, it to. It does. She goes, uh, she goes, oh, really? He goes, yeah, I'll take that ticket. Uh, and then the radio goes off, and we hear, we got a possible 553S at 321. She goes, God, I am not in the mood for a possible arson right now. Here, I think this is what you came for. And she hands him her number on the yeah, back of a blank back ticket. back of a blank ticket. It says, Jane Cooper, call me, 555-0103. Uh, and Hank, I dialed that number. Did you? Yeah, it just went. Oh, I'm sure. All the 555s are always made up. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hank, Hank, still not understanding what's going on, says, uh, I thank you for your professionalism, ma'am. Then he looks at the ticket and goes, oh, no. So it finally hit him, you know, because she said, here's my name, here's my number, please call me, sexy man. All right, so all the kids are getting back on the bus in Mexico, uh, and uh, uh, Geiger says, the concept of students smiling is foreign to me. I think your son put it best when he said the Spanish department would be lucky to have Peggy Hill as his newest permanent member. And Peggy, of course, said, oh, oh, Bobby says it, just fainting. Uh, Dooley says, I drink the water, uh, and then gets on the bus. Oh, <laughs> so obviously no. Dooley's got the shits. Yeah, Dooley's got the turds. <laughs> uh, and then you hear, uh, she says, ah, 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 in Espanol. He says it in Spanish, but he says, you are a pig, instead of oh, <laughs> saying, yeah. I drink the water. And she goes, oh, muy bueno. Uh, she goes, All right, come on, everybody. Andale, andale. Uh, El Autobus, thank you. Uh, and the little girl comes up to her because she's the last getting on the bus, and she goes, uh, uh -oh. in Spanish, she says, would you like to buy some gum? You know, And I've had this same experience in Mexico yeah, the kids sell you many, gum. many years ago, but they, chicle, Mr. Chicle, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, right? try to sell you gum. Yeah. Uh, the little girl says it's in Spanish, and Pe Peggy takes it as, oh, I do feel pretty. Don't eat the yellow <laughs> gum. <laughs> she says, now, everyone on the bus, please. She, again, says in Spanish, uh, I live here in Mexico. She doesn't take that into consideration. She goes, oh, we all love Mexico, but it's time to go home. And she pushes her on the bus, and then the last thing you see is the girl with her hands pressed up against the glass on the bus, and the bus taken off. 
Headed back to Texas, so she's uh, so just a little light kidnapping. She's now smuggling. A little light kidnapping. A little light kidnapping, light smuggling. And that is our first commercial break. We'll take that. We'll be, uh, we'll be right, right back. back. All right, and we are back. Um, and we are back. Yeah, we we're, are back. We're in the uh, Tom Landry Middle School parking lot, and uh, Peggy and Bobby are watching the parents come and get the kids, and then take them back away. Um, and everybody moves, and then that little Mexican girl is still standing there. Yeah. Uh, she says to Bobby, or Peggy says to Bobby, oh, for heaven's sake, first she wouldn't get on the bus, now she won't go home. She goes over to her and says, where are your parents? And the little girl in Spanish says, I don't speak English. She goes, oh, okay, we're back in America. You can speak English now. Now, honey, where are your parents? Yeah. She again says, I live in Mexico I in Spanish. I live in Mexico. And she goes, she, yeah, she yes, goes, long live Mexico. Long live Mexico. Yeah. Now, where are your parents? And then she looks at the girl finally, and you see, uh, she says, I live in Mexico. You see the little girl has a Mexican shirt on. She's got um, like like little um, flip-flops on. Chanclas. She's holding a thing of, of, of gum. She's got a serape over her shoulder yeah. and stuff. Chanques, chicles, and serape. It finally hits Peggy, and she's, she's like, oh, my God. Kidnapped now a child, she Peggy. What happened. God yeah. damn. Now, <laughs> Come on, Peggy. Now we're in the alley with this all. This is a tough one, too. <laughs> Kidnapping right. a child. That's got to be the shittiest thing she's probably done yet. It is pretty rough. But this one's because she's stupid, not because she meant to. Uh, yeah, but like, so. <laughs> your stupidity, it's, it's, it's the confidence and the arrogance that makes her shitty. Like, well, so if you don't know a language, don't go to another country and run around and end up kidnapping a damn kid that's mm. crazy well you already yeah. covered up a chicken murder she's not even drunk that's the so, bad thing she's so. peggy doesn't even abuse substances and she's out here kidnapping kids she abuses people's confidence yeah uh, so we're in the alley with all four guys uh you see the cops starting to drive up hank's like oh no uh and then uh, dale says thanks to citizen gorgeous we have a police state in the alley that's funny the cop gets Is out that making fun of citizen kane hey, well i mean it's whatever you know yeah. just citizen whoever uh, the cop says, you three had better leave before I write you tickets for public drunkenness. Uh, Bill says, but we're not drunk. Yes, yet." She goes, you want to spend a day in court fighting it? Huh? Huh? Come on, big boy. She's just poking Bill in the, in the in stomach the with her nightclub yeah. uh, or nightstick. He goes, huh? Oh, well, there, there's something you should know. My wife is going to be home any minute. And the cop says, do you know which route she's taking? Because I could easily set up a roadblock. Damn. <laughs> he told her that he was married, and she didn't even give a yeah, damn. Yeah, she didn't give Not even a heartbeat. Hank's just like, okay, then. And he just turns around to go inside. Uh, she looks over the fence at yeah. Hank's ass as he lo- walks away, which, you know, uh, we found out that Hank has no ass. None. I mean, there's been a there's been an entire episode devoted to the fact that Hank has no ass, and, and he was wearing a fake ass. I'm absolutely not sure what she's looking at unless he's still wearing that fake ass. So she looks over the fence, and she goes, Yee, doggy, I'll take me a burger with that shake. Bye, fancy pants, as he walks <laughs> inside. And Hank cannot walk inside you know, fast at this enough point, at that point. I would have had to ask for your sergeant. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no kidding, right? Can, can you get your sergeant here, man? I need your sergeant. Uh, okay, so Bobby, Peggy, and the Mexican girl come in the Hill House, and I'm sorry, I don't know her name. Otherwise, uh, the only thing I know to call her is a little Mexican girl. Uh, and they uh, go into Peggy's office, which, of course, we all know is the water heater closet. Peggy's office is a water heater <laughs> closet, yeah. I wonder if it she, is a uh, gas-powered. Oh, oh, I'm assuming that, that it is gas-powered. Now, do this you, is probably you, the only propane uh, not not propane not gas propane. that Hank will allow in his house. Well, see, that's the thing I never understood about Hank. Unless he's got a propane so, tank outside. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, you never see one on the show, but uh, for a lot of people who don't live in rural areas that watch King of the Hill, uh, sometimes uh, in Texas you're driving out in the middle of nowhere and you pass by somebody's house and you see this massive tank, uh, you know, kind of a way. They don't usually have it directly near the house, obviously, because it's propane, but you'll see a propane tank offset from the house and that is like an actual propane tank that people use to power their homes with. Or not well, power their homes, but also, power their Also, a lot of those stuff, guys, a lot of those folks that stuff. have that out in the yard, they, they, they natural gas has not been run to those houses. No, nah, there, no na- there is no natural, natural gas lines. Yeah, it. they just have electricity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, most of those places that are like that are ran on wells, too. So mm-hmm. they have propane, yeah. and then they have well water. And a water. septic tank. And, uh, and a se- if yeah. they have a septic tank, yeah. yeah. 
All right, so they're in Peggy's office. They're she, in Peggy's office. She says, uh, we should have her call her parents in case they're worried. Dame su familia, Lupe. And she, she, goes, uh, she says in Spanish, my family does not have a phone. She goes, she refuses to call home because her family hates her. That's no, that's true. not what she said, Peggy. Bobby says, uh, what's to hate? Uh, and then in Spanish, uh, she says, uh, <laughs> the little girl says to her in Spanish, I have no idea what you're saying, but it better not be anything about my mother. Which, she's pissed. The little girl's pissed. Yeah, the little girl should be pissed. <laughs> Peggy says... She got uh, kidnapped. She was just trying to get on the bus. <laughs> Peggy says, I was afraid of this. Now she wishes I was her mother. If your father or Herr Geiger finds out about this, it's over. Is Herr German for... Mr. Is it Mr.? Just yeah. Mr.? Okay. Yeah, Herr means Mr. Uh, it says, find out about this, it's over. She goes, we will hide her until morning when your father goes to work, and I will smuggle her back into Mexico. Now, give her some space. She does not like you. <laughs> She's never given any indication she doesn't like Bobby. No. All right, later in the kitchen. It um, could also be sir. Well, that's true. Sir or mister. Uh, she, uh, she's talking to Bobby. She goes, take this to Lupe, and she hands him a sandwich and stuff. She sees the cop car pulling pulling outside, you know, real slow. Because this, this lady is now stalking uh, Hank at this point. Actively stalking right. Hank at this point. Yeah, this is uh, it's getting a little... Uh, Unprofessional. <laughs> she looks at Bobby and goes, oh, my God, Bobby, did you rat me out? Did you? How much did they give you? Like, she automatically assumes that Bobby has thrown her under the fucking bus. Yeah. Uh, he takes foods into her. Uh, Hank comes in. He goes, what are you doing? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. He comes in the front door. He sees, he sees Ladybird sniffing at the door where the little girl is, and he goes, what are you doing, girl? Is there a bone in there, a ball? Then he looks at her. They, they, ch- they exchange a look, and he goes, oh, a bone. Like, he can understand what the hell she's... Yeah, like he knows what she's talking about, yeah. So he opens the door. He sees the Mexican girl eating the sandwich. Then he just closes the door really easy. He doesn't say a damn thing. Yeah, I mean, what do you do, like, in that situation, honestly? he knows. He goes straight to the kitchen and goes, Peggy, there's a little Mexican girl in the utility closet. Yeah. (laughs) She goes, oh, must be a friend of Bobby's. Bobby, Bobby! Hank crosses his arms, not not really buying it from her. And she goes... Okay, I accidentally brought her back from Mexico. He goes, you brought an extra kid back and didn't notice it? Well, we better call the authorities. She says, what could the authorities do that I can't except ruin my teaching career? I am taking her back first thing in the morning. Hank says, Peggy, you you may be a little in over your head. She goes, I smuggled that girl into this country without even knowing it. Don't you think I could smuggle her back (laughs) if I put my mind to it? Yeah. (laughs) So later on in the night, you see Hank sitting on the couch with the little Mexican girl, and they're watching... Senior, what's his name? The priest? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I brain farted on but that. But the senior, uh, Mar- senior Martinez. That's not Martinez. I can't remember. Uh, somebody will yell at us about it. Uh, but they're watching that TV show, and uh, they're all speaking Spanish and shooting at each other. He looks at her and goes, is this show pretty accurate? Like, she's going <laughs> to. Yeah, it's Martinez. <laughs> like Monsieur. Mon- uh, Monsignor Martinez. Monsignor That's what Martinez. it is. Uh, Peggy comes in and goes, Hank, close the blinds and, or put the wig back on Lupe. Oh, my Lord, that police woman is here again. Okay, n- uh, number one, she had a wig on her, and then they took it off? That's what I guess, <laughs> what yeah, 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 doing. I guess. Uh, and she says, that police woman is here again. He goes, what? She goes, we need a distraction. Ram her car with your truck and then get into one of those high-speed chases. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a great idea, Peggy. Uh, he, he just goes, uh, he goes outside. He's going to talk to the police woman. He goes, boy, that's a handsome squad car. What is that, a Caprice, a Crown Victoria? She goes, it's a Crown Victoria. He goes, but uh, how does the siren work? Has it got a button on it or some kind of toggle switch? She goes, a toggle. Uh, And then you see Bobby, Peggy, and the Mexican girl sneaking out and driving away. She goes, did you know in Greek mythology a siren was a beautiful woman who sang so sweetly that she could make sailors crash into the rock? (laughs) That's kind of romantic, isn't it? He goes, "Uh, actually, pretty irresponsible. He just walks off. Yeah, he ain't ain't with it. Peggy drives off. The cop sees her drive off in the rearview mirror. She gets pissed off, and she chases Peggy down. Uh, Peggy sees the cop in the rearview mirror, and she goes, great, good job, Hank. Like, pissed off at Hank that, that he couldn't divert the cop. Yeah. Uh, pulls over because she goes, pull over, Mrs. Hill, over the radio, uh, and they park. Uh, Peggy says to the little Mexican girl, Lupe, follow my lead. And she goes, follow my lead. And then she gives the craziest, um, like, creepiest smile to the cop as yeah. she walks up. Uh, and she goes, uh, step out of the car, please. Turn around. Spread them. 
And she, she's literally like making her put her hands on the car and spreading it so she can frisk her. She goes, she goes, not bad, but take a look at this. And then she puts her hands on the car and starts shaking her ass at Peggy and goes, huh, huh? Now get out of here. Like she's threatening Peggy with her ass. Um, and Peggy gets in the car and she says to herself, Peggy, you are one cool customer. Peggy, one cool Peggy you didn't do a damn customer. thing. She you didn't do a damn thing. Shit. Uh, okay, so we're back in Mexico. Uh, and Peggy lets the little girl out. She goes, well, honey, you're she home. She finally makes it home. Yeah, she goes, I don't want to make this goodbye any harder than I... And the girl gets out and just runs. Uh, everybody in the background, they're just like, oh, Lupe, Lupe. Uh, and then this woman comes up, gets down on her knees like an old Mexican woman, and starts thanking Peggy. And she goes, oh, do not worship me. Worship my actions. <laughs> worship. Worship. That's a rough one. Yeah, she, rough this one. is a really shitty one. Uh, the little girl then points at Peggy and says very angrily, Estrella! And uh, all the people start coming over to Peggy. And she goes, oh, please, you flatter me. Uh, and then the cops pull up and they start taking her. Uh, and she goes, oh, I'm just here for the children. Well, that's not a great thing if they think you're stealing her children. Yeah, not at all. Uh, <laughs> so the cops pull up and they take her. Uh, and uh, she goes, I'm just here for the children. Uh, and then they say, we must take her to the commandant. She hears that. Yeah, she, she thinks she's getting a commendation. Goes, They're I'm taking her to the cops. The I'm commandant a, is like the chief of police. She goes, I'm getting a commendation? Wait till Geiger hears about this. Uh, she goes, I would have gotten here earlier, but some of your roads are very bad. And then they start putting her in the squad car. And so now Peggy gets Starting the fact to click. that she yeah. is being taken to jail. And that is the second commercial break, which came up real quick. And uh, we'll take that and we'll be right back. All right, and we are back. Uh, now, we, we're <coughs> at the police station, and there's everybody is protesting in Spanish. Uh, they're all yelling at Peggy. They're yelling at they're the police yelling. station. Yeah. Uh, they are screaming. Everybody's kind of pissed because uh, she kind of just kidnapped a child mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. drove her across international borders. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of kind of tough. Peggy is in a uh, Peggy's like in a, a uh, she's in like a quagmire. Well, yeah, and she's in a uh, like an interrogation room, and uh, the one cop comes up to her and says something in Spanish. He says, "I hope you rot in jail and the rats eat your eyes out." That's tough. Of course, she responds aye, to aye, that aye. with "Gracias." You know, <laughs> they're probably thinking she's a mad woman. You know, that's yeah, one thing I didn't yeah, understand absolutely. is is uh, they have to know that she can't speak Spanish at this point. They have you to realize there's so. some kind of communication issue, and you have to think that somebody at this point has talked to her in English. Well, you would even think in so, even in a jail. Yeah, uh, that's a, not near as funny. A lot of uh, I'm not saying a lot, <laughs> but you know, I, I imagine there's a fair amount of people that are in positions of uh, power oh, I would that imagine. speak English. Yeah. What uh, they do give her a phone to call somebody. She she uh, picks up the phone and, of course, calls home. And Hank's like, hello? She goes, Hank, I am in Navarro. Uh, she goes, I am in Nuevo Laredo, uh, and I'm a big freaking hero for bringing Lupe home safely. So she still doesn't get it, right? Yeah, she still don't get it. It's still not, like, fully clicked to her yet. He goes, well, good job, Peggy. I'm proud of you. She goes, thank you. Now I need, to, need you to do me a solid. Give me the number for Herr Geiger. I want him on the speakerphone when I meet the mayor. He goes, oh, okay, I think I saw your address book on the nightstand. Yeah. And he just lets the phone hang. You know, I don't know if you remember having a, a landline, but you would just let the phone hang there while you went and Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? uh, and then through the phone, you hear Peggy say, okay, excuse me, what are you doing? You will you will give me back my shoelaces. I, I am a United States citizen. The, the, these are th That's too tight. These are chains. You're creating an international incident. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> She goes, help, help. And Hank gets back on the phone and says, Patience, Peggy. Okay, Herman Geiger. She goes, Hank, I've been arrested. He goes, Peggy, quit messing around. This is long distance. Yeah. She goes, get down here, Hank. Help, help. All right, so Hank, Hank gets in his car, speeding help. to her. And, of course, he passes the cop again. Yeah. The cop pulls him over, and she goes, oh, I knew you'd come back. This time I'm going to make that horse drink, she says to herself. Whoa. <laughs> Hank says. Make that horse drink. <laughs> Hank says to her, okay, okay, I, I, I was speeding. She goes. You want speed and Hank? Feel this. And she puts his hand right on her breast. Yeah. And Hank's like, oh, oh. <laughs> that freaks him out. She, he goes, oh, look, this is not a good time. My wife is in trouble. She says, you know, I don't get you. One minute you're trying to get under my hood, and the next minute you don't want to leave your wife. Those are not really, like, one-to-ones, you know, like uh, <laughs> the next minute you don't want to leave your wife. 
He goes, I never wanted to leave my wife. She goes, yeah. I am so sick of these mind games. Maybe I should just take you in. He goes, no, no, I got to go. She goes, halt or I'll shoot. Whoa. Now <laughs> she's, now she's uh, breaking some laws she here. She goes, how can I be sure those alleged seven pounds you say weren't you carrying? Well, that could be a gun or stolen art for all I know. He goes, I assure you, it is art. simply a small additional ridge of fat. <laughs> she says, if you want to go to your wife so bad, then I got to frisk you. He says, I'm not really being I'm not really comfortable being touched. She goes, then I'll just have to take you in and raises her eyebrow at him. He goes, oh, all right. He st- he turns around for a frisk, and then as she's frisking him, the only thing that will make him comfortable is singing to himself, Oh, say can then you see by the dawn's early Which is an I mean odd, it's so yeah. but it's so warbly and so you know he's, he's so uncomfortable. She goes, All right, you're clean. Uh, and she seems disappointed. He gets back in the truck, and he goes, oh, I feel dirty. And then she watches him drive off, and to herself, she goes, bye, fancy pants. Like she, <laughs> like they Ooh. had this big, long relationship or something. Goodbye, fancy pants. All right, pants. so here is the part where I really thought I was going to be late today because I had to write down all, this, all the stuff they uh, yeah, said the court, the, Yeah, the uh, court, the court hearing. Uh, the thing about Hulu is when you pause it, uh, the little bar that pauses it goes over the the um, the captions, yeah. and so you have to rewind ten seconds and watch it again. Rewind ten seconds and watch it again. I got you. So after all of my hard work, here we go. Uh, we're in the Mexican court, and uh, you hear the lawyer say, "This hearing will determine if there is enough evidence to hold you for trial." He's saying to Peggy, "He goes, if we do go to trial, you'll be transferred to a facility in Mexico until your court date, which could be anywhere from one and a half to six years." Oh no, uh, that's tough, Peggy. <laughs> the judge in Spanish, all of this is in Spanish, says, uh, "Mr. Ortiz, I'm ready to hear your opening arguments." Uh, then he gets up and says, uh, Your Honor, I will prove that my client accidentally transported a minor across international borders. Then the other lawyer gets up, so the, uh, this would be the uh, prosecution, uh-huh. gets up and says, Your Honor, the woman you see before you may look innocent with those big, goofy glasses, but they cannot hire her true malevolence. And then we see Hank come in through the back. Uh, I think it's funny they're trying to make her out to be this you big, know, goofy glasses. Big, is what I like. malevolent person. Hank comes in, and uh, you hear, Hank, Hank, over here. She motions him over. He walks up to her and goes, all right, Peggy, get your stuff. Like, he can just walk into a freaking court because it's Mexico and just go, all right, let's get out of here. Yeah. Uh, the lawyer says, uh, 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 no, 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 no. I'm afraid the charges against your wife are quite serious, but I have a brilliant plan. I intend to show that her Spanish is so poor that she could barely order a glass of water, much less order that child to do anything. Peggy, of course, is upset. She goes, that is completely untrue. And if that goes down on Mexican records, my teaching career is tostada. Tostada. I am very fluent. Listen to me <laughs> roll my R. I rest my case. <laughs> The Mexican court continues, and she goes, did you hear that? Now, we all have to sit here while this guy goes out and buys a hat. So she thinks that the (laughs) the guy said he was going to go get a hat. Uh, Hank looks at the lawyer after a couple seconds. He goes, Mr. Ortiz, I hate to disagree with you, but my wife speaks perfect Spanish. You must put her on the stand. And the lawyer goes, but that's crazy. And he goes, so that she may tell her story in her own words in Spanish. And he goes, oh, of course. Yeah. So, like, without tipping Peggy in on it, he's like, get her up there, let her speak her half-ass let Spanish. Let her say and whatever say, the hell she say, wants to it, say. She can go. They're going to find out real fast, yeah. And she goes, you're right. That blowhard will go on forever if I don't get up there. Because he goes, uh, Peggy, you need to get up on the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, the judge says, you may call your next witness. Her lawyer says, I would like to call Peggy Hill to the stand. Uh, he says it twice in Spanish. She does not understand it. So that's when Hank says, uh, Peggy, I think you ought to go up on the stand. She says, you're you right. Go, that Peg. blowhard will go on forever. She gets on the stand. By the way, she's still in chains. Um, Which is kind of... <laughs> it seems like an over overreaction, but yeah, hey, they thought uh, she stole a child. It's policy, yeah. So uh, the lawyer says, uh, Mrs. Hill, in your own words, your own Spanish words, please tell the judge what happened with little Lupe. Now, this is all in Spanish. Very bad Spanish by Peggy. She says, Your Honor, I can tell you are a reasonable horse. I am very pregnant because of what happened to Lupe. She ate my bus by accident, and all I wanted to do was make Lupe into a book. I have too many good... <laughs> <laughs> anus. Oh wow! I have too many good anuses ahead of me to spend Yo. my life in a cigar factory. <laughs> I, I want that on a shirt. 
just says, Your Honor, I can tell you are a reasonable horse. I want that, number one. We should do that. That's that should be fantastic. our uh, that should be our limited I edition can tell shirt. You're a reasonable horse. There you go. That should be our limited edition shirt. <laughs> so a little time flies. The judge with comes the horse mask head <laughs> that's on right. there. Yeah. <laughs> the judge comes back in. He goes, uh, Senorita Hill, uh, please stand as I read the verdict. Uh, and then he says, I find not guilty. And he bangs the, the gavel. Now, there this is, go. again, all in Spanish. All in Spanish. So, of course, Peggy responds with, oh, my God, I'm going to jail. Uh, <laughs> and then the lawyer says, he said you're not guilty. She goes, oh, oh, right. Uh, good, 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 good. Thank you, thank you. Gracias por Jago. I don't even know what the hell she said there, yeah, but it was either. bad, whatever it was. <laughs> it wasn't good. Hank <laughs> looks at her and says, congratulations, Peggy, you did it. She goes, see, sí. and that is not Spanish for yes. That is Peggy Hill for I told you so, see. Sí. I told her so. And then a big-ass kiss between the two of them. And that is the end of the episode. It seemed like it went by so quickly. Yeah, that was a, that was a quick episode. A very quick. After the credits, of course, we get Dooley saying, It does like, feel like a quick My one. chicken's the star of the show. My chicken's the star of the show. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, that yep. was uh, season six. That was episode season six. three. Episode three. Lupe's Revenge from December 12th, 2001. Lupe's you want to tell Revenge. people where they can find us if they would like more of this? Yeah, well, uh, you can find us on youtube.com slash at B W A A A K O T H. All of our video content and uh, stuff is on there. You can go to Spotify too for video yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, appreciate all of the the support that's been on the youtube the last couple of weeks we've had we've had a lot of traffic there and we appreciate all yeah, that yeah, yeah. uh you can also find us at bwaaakoth.com but please don't forget to go to youtube and subscribe and hit that notification bell for when we go live yeah. uh me and mike are uh we, we we go live every time we record we try to do it on sundays uh, try to do it on sundays noon, around noon ish like uh, yeah and also, I'm going to try to do uh, so you some can eat your uh, American tacos while you're watching our live stream. Gaming. I want to do some gaming. Uh, I just want to drive the American Truck Simulator. Yeah. Uh, like and that. play that while I'm in tech because they have a mm-hmm. Texas DLC mm-hmm. map. Uh, what the goal of their project is for American Truck Simulator, the company that makes it, is to eventually have the entire United States. Yeah. Right now, they only have like the western portion and yeah. then just like Texas. That's cool, so yeah. I think it would be fun to drive through Texas and haul stuff, and then uh, maybe do uh, some community stuff where people uh, uh, maybe that watch the show that play the game could uh, drive with me or something and oh, haul neat. some stuff yeah. around. So You're going to set up a convoy. Uh, yeah, what you're saying. yeah. Well, they, they have uh, they actually have a uh, third-party multiplayer uh, uh, downloadable thing for it where you could go on a server that will hold up to like a thousand truck drivers. Wow. You could drive around and uh, there's like a CB feature. So if you're within a certain amount of distance of people, you could talk on the CBs while you're driving oh, around and stuff. Cool. So I think that'd be fun to, fun to do By the way, that. your cup, is that uh, Mighty Boosh? Uh, no, I explained it to uh, the YouTube guys earlier. Okay. So what it is is uh, there's a company called Oddwood Brewery uh-huh. in Austin. It's like a pizza place and a brewery. They teamed up with another company called Old Greg Brewery, and they made a beer called Oddwood Taberna, uh, or El Sonido Nuevo, uh, Mexican-style Vienna lager. Uh, uh-huh. Again, back to the Mexican and German thing that we were talking about. I swear to God, that's Old Greg, though, from uh, the Mighty Boosh. Yeah, the between the two of them. Yeah, the yeah. old Greg. Yeah, it's oh, I'm be old, old Greg. Greg. Yeah, it's well, that's the name Greg. of the brewery yeah. is Old Greg. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. that's the uh, that's like the old Greg thing. Huh. Yeah. So that's, that's their cool. beer. Yeah. Uh, the, I deliver to Oddwood. I deliver wine to him, huh. and uh, he had a bunch of these because they hand sticker their yeah, yeah, their, yeah. their sure. beers. Sure. So he had a stack of these that he was meaning to grab and take yeah. to the back with That's him or cool. whatever. Yeah. And I was like, hey, can I have one of those? I said, I like stickers. And he's like, oh, yeah, here you go. Yeah. He said, I got boxes full. Oh, so that's very cool. He gave me yeah. one of the stickers. I like that a lot. Yeah. And uh, this is a new cup, so I wanted a, a, a fresh I've got, I've got like waterproof a s- sticker. This sticker is uh, is oh, tougher than sense. a mother liquor. That makes sense because yeah. it's on beer bottles. It's yeah. tougher than a mother liquor. Mother liquor. Some mother liquor. That's it. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, flying uh, uh, Concords, though, right? Old Greg? No. The, 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 no, that's on Old Greg. Is it on Old Greg? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, they say that on uh, Flight of the Concords also. Well, that that's might be things, that might be their tongue-in-cheek making fun of Could Old be. Greg, maybe. Could be. maybe. Could be. All right. Well, just remember, uh, there is a Patreon set up. Uh, yep. Three bucks a month. If you can help us out, we sure would appreciate it. It helps us keep the lights on. helps me get here on time. 
Uh, again, like uh, Rusty said, the video is on YouTube. It's also available on it Spotify. On YouTube. Uh, the podcast in and of itself, just the uh, the audio is available anywhere you get your podcast. Anywhere. And also, uh, I have one quick thing I need to read here. All right. Uh, this is, uh, it's, it's ad time, boys and girls. So I've got a small ad here I am going to read. Normally you won't get this kind of setup. Hey, you want to add personality to your gear? Meet Sticker Mule, the ultimate destination for custom stickers, labels, T-shirts, and more. Whether you're branding your business or just want to express yourself, Sticker Mule has got you covered. Uh, with easy online ordering, four-day turnaround, free online proofs, and free shipping, your custom creations will be in your hands in no time. And the best part? They're durable, weather-resistant, and made to last. Ready to make your mark? Head over to Sticker Mule Sticker with Mule. our special address, and I've shortened it, bit.ly slash BWAAA Mule. That is BWAAA Mule for an exclusive discount. Mule. Start Sticker Mule today. Custom printing that kicks ass. There you go. There's an ad. Do so do if do anybody do. if anybody says we have too many ads, well, there's one there. There's they one at point the at. very yeah. end. Yeah. Very end, yeah. I want you all to understand that was the very end. But, hey, again, thanks again for uh, joining it. us. We always appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you again on Friday. We oui, matanye. We oui, matanye, indeed. <laughs>